Do most of y'all's friends go to church? Are you in the minority or? So you're in the minority for? Yeah. I'm a social worker, so most of my friends from work, for example, are kind of free thinking individuals and they associate church with um, not being the opposite of being progressive. And that they, I think they think that it's kind of an anomaly that I go to a church that is you know, supportive of people no matter where they are in their life and, you know, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know if they believe that it's really as progressive as I describe it to be. Yeah. Sundays are really great, but I feel like people are made for fellowship. You need that. Yeah. You need fellowship mm -hmm. with other believers. Um, you can't have just a one and done on Sunday and think that's going to tide you over for the whole week. Um, it's just so easy to lose that. So that's why small group is really important to me. Where do you feel God is mostly present in your experience throughout mm -hmm. through the week? Probably doing worship at church okay. for me. Um, I think there there's definitely room for him to be, uh, you know, more present in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that comes with dedicating time and doing devotional and that's not something I'm really great at. Um, okay. Which is why small group is important because it's a dedicated time every week when I'm going to spend time with Jesus and I don't always do a good job of that on my own and let life get in the way. It's super encouraging to meet with this group of women and hear about how they've been doing devotionals or what they've been praying about this week or what they've been studying or what they feel like the Lord has told them. Um, it's convicting and I need that in my life. I think we're raising a bunch of like punky Christians. <laughs> like I do. I I don't I don't and that's probably not a very nice thing no, to no, say, no. but like you read in the Bible about these people that were, you know, threatened with being crucified and they went out and preached the word anyway and they were out in the streets do, doing stuff and then you go to church and it just feels so light and airy and uh, we're gonna make you feel good about what you need to do better and we're going to challenge you, but not too hard, because we don't want to push you too hard, because you might not come back next week. One place that we have to improve as a church is not tackling hard stuff, because we're afraid that somebody is going to get offended and not come back. I feel convicted about how small my Christianity is. I feel like it's very much encompassed in my Sunday. I serve in Upstreet. That makes me feel really good. It makes, sure. makes me feel like I get back. Mm -hmm. I tithe and meet with these girls on, on Wednesday, but like outside of that, my life is about me. It's mm -hmm. like, my life is very much about me and my husband, what makes me happy, and um, I, I think the church could do a, a better job of um, challenging people to be bigger about their faith. I was kind of brought in to do um, Eucharistic ministering, um, that's a verb. Right, sort of, maybe. Yeah. Um, and that's been really great because honestly, sometimes you, I do need motivation to like go to church, and um, that's always just a great. Well, you gotta go, and then I'm always happy I went. What's important um, about the sermon for you? What do you look for? What what feeds you in a sermon? I really like that our church focuses on like serious social justice issues and doesn't just kind of dust over things we really like go deep into it and it's I think there's just a time where you're not being I mean I very early wasn't forced to go I started going to church alone when I was very young probably like 13 years old so like that was my story and that's totally different from everyone else's most people I hear is like my parents forced me to go until I was in the end of high school and you know once you get to college you're just like give me a break. What the church did well with me, um, one of the priests recruited me to do the Eucharistic ministering and that was, I had purpose, I had something to do, I felt like very, I just felt more of a part of the community, not just like a kid attending with a parent as mm. I used to. Um, and then something that, I think it's fine because I know well, it's fine sometimes, because I know that young adults are the best choices for, like, helping with youth group and helping with children's chapel and helping with things. But, like, 
not everyone my age likes children. Like, I do. I love children. I want to be a teacher. It's fine. But, like, there are people my age who are like, I hate children. Don't touch me. <laughs> and they just don't. Like, that's not what they want to do. And when they're immediately recruited, like, oh, come help, like, with Children's Chapel. Like, I think you'd be great. It's like, maybe they don't want to spend, like, half of church. Like, maybe they want to hear the sermon. What church offers that other nonprofits possibly do not? My first instinct is to say community, but I know that's incorrect. Um, because I've experienced community in a lot of places that aren't church. Um... So I'm sort of thinking, well, what makes church community different? And I want to say the level of support, and it's more like family, but that is also present. So I think there's a lot to be said in a group that does come together in worship and in the breaking of bread. Um, one of the great things about the Episcopal Church to me is that so many people with varying beliefs can come together and we can agree to disagree. Um, and it doesn't have to get too political, but sometimes it does. Um, so I, I think it's it's a different kind of bond in, in Eucharist, in the breaking of bread, in coming together um, under whether or not a strictly cohesively held belief, but a similar belief system, and um, this idea that we are all moving under something bigger than all of us. Church hurts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Church hurts a lot of people, and I've been hurt by church, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have been hurt by church, um, and not everybody feels the desire or drive to try to go back into something and give it another chance when um, they've been really hurt. I do not attend church. Okay. I am religious mm -hmm. and spiritual, but I do not attend church. I live in town, I work in town, I prefer to go to church mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. None of us are perfect and we don't expect to be perfect, but mm -hmm. I have a very difficult time with being judged and I have a very difficult time with the the judging of others. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like I have to defend people all the time. Sure. And so it is, if I'm in an environment that I don't think fosters love, I would prefer not to be in it at all. Mm -hmm. force someone or convince someone logically to believe in Christ. It's got to come from the Spirit. You know, you hear people, uh, and, and I'd say too, like, I don't go to church because I don't get anything out of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then I go, well, work is about like church, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Who shows up to work and says, okay, who's got something for me? <laughs> Give me something to do, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, you go to work, right? right. If you want to be successful, you learn and you... You get something out of it. So I always look at, you know, what did you bring to church? Everybody's got something. And that's, I think, the thing is everybody thinks you're a priest or, you know what I mean, or you're a deacon or you're, you got you got it all figured out and you're going to come down on me because I'm all wayward and, you know, <laughs> I got all kinds of vices and, you know what I mean, all that stuff. I think that's one of the biggest separators with the young people is I got parents. You know what I mean? I got the man coming down on me. I don't need to go, you know what I mean, do this voluntarily. So that's why the Buckhead churches are so popular. Nothing against them, but they're extremely therapeutic. You know, they're extremely topical of what, you know, it, it's just, it, it, it's missing a lot of the religious elements that I appreciate. The, the gap is, the, the, you know, I, I can speak obviously the, the media, the, the, uh, the, uh, I, a lot of people say, yeah, I got Jesus in my heart, I don't need to go there, I got this, you know, I know who I, what I believe and who I believe. I think what would bring, what's missing is they think it's, you know, a money thing, you hear that, uh, disappointingly, but you hear that a lot, but, you know, nothing gives back more than, you know, religious organizations. They hear that every war has ever been started has been about some type of religious thing, the Holy Wars, or the Middle East, I mean, they... Everything they can't get along is because of their beliefs. So people are like, what kind of religion is that? It really, I mean, if you think about it, 
it's it's sad, but a lot of kids, people my age, they get it. They think it's great to go to church, but I can honestly say in my peer group, I don't know five couples that are regular church attenders. Mm. I feel like another thing about young people, especially with like the YouTube thing and all that other stuff, the one thing that a lot of them say who are successful is often authenticity. Mm -hmm. So if you're not authentic, they're going to be able to tell and be like, oh, you're just putting up a front. You're just trying to get me in here. I think that young adults stop going to church as, like you said, it's a rebellion against what they were raised at a little bit. But then it's also that we don't young adults don't like to be labeled as one thing or another. The dating world gets a little tougher um, because you have to find someone who has that value along with you. And that's hard to find. People, everybody, always find time to do what they truly, truly want to do. And that's where, that's the point to get to, and that's the hard point to get to. Yeah. Usually, something traumatic has to happen for you to get to that point. Yeah. Like, you know, a personal illness, or loss of a loved one, or an addiction problem where, you know, a bottom is created for you, or a bottom just happens, and you're like, okay, this has got to stop. I am not, this is not what life's about. There has to be more than this, mm -hmm. and I am, I, I, I got, you know, they get, I know this sounds bad, but they get desperate, mm -hmm. you know, so they try, I'm going to try mm -hmm. religion. Aren't church, and a lot of them, um, either they never grew up in the church, and so that just was never a priority for their family, and they don't really have a context for understanding why it might speak to them, mm -hmm. or they grew up in a church setting that they feel is so foreign to where they are now, whether, um, and most of them being people that grew up going to Catholic school and just don't feel that, even even though they may be totally impressed by Pope Francis, mm -hmm. just don't feel like it speaks to where they are now. Things that attract people to young to, to churches, young people to churches, or young adults to churches, is um, just being able to picture themselves there, um, finding some kind of common thread where they feel like either this text speaks to me, or this person speaks to me, or these issues speak to me. Um, then, then it's like, oh, I, I could be there. Yeah. They go to church. Yeah. There's been a, uh, in a recent issue of the Atlanta magazine, mm -hmm. uh, they have a statistic that says that, um, about 75% of millennials mm -hmm. in Atlanta don't say that they don't attend church. Mm -hmm. Um, why do you think that might be? Uh, because... Because church is just very, I don't know, it's just very much your parents, I think so. I think sometimes, it's like it doesn't grow with you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, even with my parents, like, the one, one they were kind of disciplinarians, and then, you know, we've tried to transition to more of like friendship understanding. I feel like church, it doesn't transition through life with you, and it sometimes mm. doesn't prepare you. Mm. I feel like in today's world, and especially with younger people, you have to have a, a humanitarian aspect, mm. and some churches are just so like law, theological, and just mm. very kind of backwards I would say in a way to where it doesn't speak to that human side of you like it's like but I am a human so how do I balance out this holy God in my human self mm. and how does this apply and they don't really speak to that and especially in your 20s when you're trying to figure out how to balance that and who you are like if church isn't going to provide me why well, go there it's enough so yeah. like I can put something else in my day that will provide me actual peace rather than just um, magnifying this conflict that I already feel